All right, welcome to Liquidity and Liquor. I'm Scott D. Clary. This is Yosef Martin. Today we're going to talk about bad hires and catching people who are stealing from you in the office. So um, you posted this on TikTok a couple days ago, which I thought was interesting. Uh, let's talk about what happened to you at Boxy with someone you hired. No, so look, guys, I had I had probably 18 years experience of being an entrepreneur, 20 years, right? So I had many people stealing from me that I caught, right? I don't know how many that I haven't caught. But one particular one was an interesting case where he, he I don't want to say if it was Boxy Chum or a previous business that I had, just so he doesn't look. Uh, oh, I assumed it was Boxy, yeah. but yeah, it doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, it was a company that I, I ran. I had multiple companies. So it was, um, it was our CFO. And the company was small at the time, so the title CFO was actually exaggerated. It was, it was like 10 employees or so at the time. But you know when you get a gut feeling about a person, it's, it's sometimes not enough to go and make a decision. But I feel like if I don't feel comfortable with someone that manages my money, I just don't think twice. So I wanted to fire him because, look... Other than the fact that he smiled all the time, which was weird, and he had stupid jokes, I mean, horrible jokes, that was horrible, but but when you get serious about this, you feel like he's, hire, he's hiding something, he has like a second agenda, I didn't know what. One day, uh, I went, he had a secretary, and I asked her for expense report, when I asked him for expense report, usually it was more like, it was on an organized Excel sheet, like X amount on marketing, X amount on this, and he wasn't uh, at the office and uh, it was really random. I wasn't looking for anything. And uh, let's backtrack. I was when I when I fire someone uh, without cause and there is a contractual obligation to pay severance, there was around 100 grand. And I was more than comfortable doing that because I just didn't feel comfortable just to show you how how I am. I'm, I'm OK with my intuition. Mm -hmm. There was nothing that I call in this. Case, just I didn't feel right with this guy. So then um I go and I uh, ask her for expense report, but instead of giving me an organized document, she just hand me over all the um, credit card fees because everything was paid with the card. So just the credit card bills and the statements. And I said, you know what, it's better actually. Let me look at the credit card statements. And we had a couple card holders in the company. So when I looked at mine and everybody else, there were just a few transactions for each one of us, but he had a long one. Makes sense, he's a CFO. But then you start saying Publix, 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 restaurants, <laughs> just donations at church, uh, crazy stuff. What is this? Every day a restaurant twice? With who? What is it? So then I asked uh, his secretary, I said, is he going twice with business associates for restaurants? What is it? Like, no, he goes a lot with his grandmother and his mother and so on and oh this is uh, a parking <laughs> lot by secretary. his church he was literally paying he was stealing money to pay for the parking lot in the church oh my god <laughs> how i mean <laughs> it's an so oxymoron bad. sir like what are you doing why are you even going to church so and then we had to go he was i mean any angle that he had he would still just buy on amazon but then you it's very hard to define which one was on the amazon card versus his card and then um, he had, <laughs> so he, he was would like buy, using it for like he would go cash. to, he would buy, he would buy a lot of, um, a uh, gift cards yeah. so he can use it for whatever he would go to Costco and so on. So so we had you, to pull all that. So and, you can't see, you can't see what, yeah, he, but, but we got all this uh, eventually we got all that. And when he came over, I thought he was going to go and bottle this and he had some percentage in the, in the business. And, um, you know, it was a sweat equity and the, the the challenging part, legally, you don't have to, you can take away his, his uh, sweat equity that he got. Mm -hmm. But you said to yourself, well, if I do that, uh, so we fired him and we'd cause, we actually, we didn't fire him. We allowed him to resign. He did. And then eventually we had um, the dilemma. What do you do with the? Uh, with his shares, do you give it to him? Legally, you don't. Ha you can do that. You can just take. You can take away his shares because it was contractually said. If we find out, it's something in like every that. contract that you'd have yeah. a clause like that. Yeah, you no, should. yeah. Imagine he's he's a CPA by trade. He had all those certificates. He, he's gonna be the one that they actually put in jail. This is not because I had people stealing from me hundreds of thousands. Would you lose a couple couple thousands? You have to give it all away. Um, and it's, but because his certificates, he would have to go and face the law. At its so at the very least, you yeah, lose the very, designation. Yeah. Everything, right? Yeah. So his whole and career. I, I remember one day I told him, "What the hell were you doing, guys? Like you, you're the one that's going to be in jail, and you're going to be someone's girlfriend, just because you're 
you have the diploma, you are going to be scrutiny like no one else. What did he say? They would, you know, he said, I know, it was stupid. They started like this and then I couldn't stop. But I believe it was always like that. I feel like he was um, a klepto from... Yeah. So eventually, uh, you know, we said, look, we'll buy your shares because we figure, well, whenever you sell the business, you know, whenever... And I had multiple exit. You know, I don't want to go and specifically talk box you or not. Yeah, yeah, I got you. But uh, the idea was that he could have been making so much more on the real exits that we had later on versus his shares of kind of, without putting numbers it was it was maybe 25 times more it's like a life-changing event right put you on a 0.01 percent on the population if if it wasn't you know so and it was all because he stole from publics because if i would to fire you i wouldn't buy your shares you i would keep the shares and then you could collect later on when we sell the business and i was and the question is, what do you do when you feel something like this happened, right? Because people will steal from you when you have a business. But how do you, will. that was, that was a, a very like, um, that one was tough because it was, it was your CFO and he had equity in the business. What was the first time you ever caught someone stealing from you? Oh, goes back. I mean, it's, yeah? it's not even worth, look, I, your number one thieves are going to be your employees because they have the access and it's just something that happened. Some people would go and look for a job. And the way they would do it, we had one that stole a couple hundred thousands from us. And it was in another business. It was just a smaller, much more smaller business. So we really felt it. Uh, me, when I say we, I mean me. Right? Yeah. So, um, and you, you don't understand. W- and she was really smart about that. She would go and get, um, she got a job as, um, she was managing her inventory. She was looking for that job because she knew if she does that, she can steal. Then she got pregnant with the warehouse guy which was married with someone else and get his wife pregnant at the same time whole oh story my god this is so popular. she she basically built the whole thing so she knew and then she got it she asked if she can also sell so she can make commission she it was a small business so instead of thinking smart about this she cannot have both and uh, both parts managing inventory and selling because that's how you steal but you don't think like that right it doesn't happen how do you steal if you sell well you manage the inventory if i sold something to you and i give you a fictitious invoice i cancel the invoice i get your money and then i go and i reduce the inventory that it never even existed in the first place <laughs> that's it, so complicated it was it took us it took us few months Holy until shit. and the, the only reason we caught it was yeah. because the way she did this the the warehouse also has a checkpoint the warehouse goes and says, okay that was released and so on but when it was her boyfriend releasing the stuff he would re- throw it away right um so what happened was one day her boyfriend wasn't getting the paper and someone else did and he's like uh, wait a minute we don't even have those pallets who are you what is it i, I don't want to go and make it complicated but it was complicated to a point that when we did call the attorney general it was too fucking complicated for them to explain the jurors and she walked away because of that they said it would be too complicated to explain she walked away with nothing and she sued me she said, I mean, she, when she got wow. caught, she sent an email saying, okay, I know I got caught. I'm so sorry. Here's my resignation. And then she said that she um, was discriminated or so on. We're like, no, here's your resignation. <laughs> we got you. But, but that's what they do. That's what they do. If there's something else that they can Entrepreneurship, do. Entrepreneurship, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Yeah. Build your own this business. Is why, this is why <laughs> the risk reward, this is why when, when you assume the risk, you deserve the reward. What we have to go through as entrepreneurs is That's nothing. Funny. Yeah, you Shit. go, you feel valid. And after a while, you don't even get upset. You just, when I was in, when I was running Boxy, we had other issues at the end. And uh, you get lawsuits all the time just because they know you have money. Things that makes no sense. They, oh, well, um, your cancellation process wasn't right. We're going to do class action. Well, you don't have any fucking plaintiffs. Yeah, well, you don't go and specialize. You don't specify that it's recurring. Well, yes, I do. Right next to the checkout button. Right next to here on the homepage, it says recording every month. It just you, they, they just send this to 20 like me, any kind of company that has any recording revenue. They, they wait for someone to buy. So we get this all the time. Once you grow, getting lawsuits, getting people stealing from you, just it's part of the business. It's part of the business. And it's very unfortunate. And a big part of com- kind of like conversations with people that have brands that are known that are big and we sit down together and we're discussing any uh, cpg pro- uh, companies like what happened to you with that lawsuit what happened with the uh, this or oh, this or oh. 99.9 percent of the times you ended up paying a couple thousand dollars just so they can walk away or pay nothing they're just trying it's uh and i wonder if one day they'll 
there'll be regulators that are going to try to be a little bit more proactive and help. If you go in, yes, it, as there's, as there's going to have to be some regulation because eventually it's uh, going, legal. Yes, it, it, eventually it's going to drive away cause, because you don't have those in other countries. Other countries that are more socialist, not friendly for uh, entrepreneurs, but you don't have that, right? Over here, it's just part of the business. So, so finish the story. So, how do you? What do you do when you have somebody like that, or how do you even avoid somebody like that if you can? <laughs> Look, expect what you don't inspect, right? So, you have to understand that people will steal from you, and as much as you trust people, no matter who it is, if it's your cousin, your uncle, your best friend, money corrupt people, and if if you create a process in which people can steal and you have no access, if if people eventually also become uh, undisposable, right? They, they, they're like a single point of failure, right? You say, I'm, I'm about to fire the CFO, yeah, but you know, I don't know how to pay my bills now. I don't, where do I pay, where do I send my rent? Where do I do? You don't know how to do any of that. Yeah. So you put yourself at risk. So be careful with that and just always think about this. Make sure that there's going to be one person supervising, another person supervising. And you have to, even if you're small. Might be bureaucratic, but just trust me, it's going to happen. It's going to, once you have four employees and on, the the probability of theft is just spiking. All right. Okay. That's it for today. If you enjoyed, please subscribe on YouTube. If you enjoyed this podcast, you can download and listen to it wherever you get your podcasts or on liquidityandliquor.com.